All right, there's a lot to talk about today, so let's dive in and dissect this newly released Reebok Pump Omnizone 2. Hey guys, welcome back to the Kicks Reasons channel. Today we are looking at the Reebok Omnizone 2, the very first retro of the model that came out 30 years ago, back in 1991 when I was in high school. That was the hottest model to get. Reebok were on top of the wave when it comes to technology. They had the Hexalite, they had ERS, they had Pump. They were just coming up with the Graphlite and they were covering every sport everywhere. They had tons of athletes. Now the Omnizones line was one of the most popular in NBA. The first model was the Omnizone 1, obviously. That one featured the slightly different upper design and an energy return system cushioning, which was later replaced with the brand new Hexalite in this model. Starting from the beginning, the Omni was worn by every single Reebok contract player around the, around the NBA, and that kind of transitioned to Omnizone 2, 3, and 4 as well. And these shoes were symbolic for quality and looks, and as well, great functionality. Now, when the Omnizone 2 came out, I remember them releasing in stores and I was so excited to see that new one coming out with the massive hex light in the back. And then I remember almost in a couple days later at school, one of the richest kids had him on feet and I stare at those shoes throughout the whole bus ride home. He was sitting like across from me. So I was like, my God, that shoe is amazing. I knew I could never afford them. They were way too expensive for me at the time and I never owned a pair until now 30 years later i'm finally happy that reebok decided to release a proper well quote unquote proper retro for the model that was the omnizone 2 the omnilite they were keep pushing our throats for the last couple of decades was the technical pre-release name of the model which was different and officially the retail model was released as omnizone 2 the designer, Miss Judy Close, designed this model uh, as well, the rest of the Omni line. But the initial model name that was coming out was called Omni Light. But that model never released with that name until later in the 2000s when Reebok started releasing the Omni Light with a lot of different changes uh, compared to the Omni Zone 2 and kind of created this false legend thing that uh, D Brown the winner of the 99 one slam dunk contest at the time with Boston Celtics number seven wore the Omni light. In fact, he wore the Omni zone two, that specific colorway, the black and white, but with white laces. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. Now they finally corrected themselves and created this 30 years anniversary edition with some of the correct features and obviously the correct name compared to what they have before. Now there's a lot to talk about this one and we're gonna talk about what Reebok did right with the Omnizone to release and what they did not uh, because they had the opportunity to create a perfect or almost perfect release, but they kind of swung in a miss on a lot of things that I'm sure a lot of you that are like me and remember the model, the purists, you're gonna notice and you're gonna be ticked about and not really like. But let's break it down. Uh, first of all, it's coming up in this pump it up box, which this was not the original box. The original box was with the British flag lid. I'm not sure why they're not doing this anymore, but um, these probably cost less and they have them, tons of them. But Reebok don't even try anymore. Even the paper is inside is not Reebok branded. It's just a white paper. There are no spare laces. There are no pump hang tags or anything like that, like before. And this is the tag right here, Reebok Omnizone 2 and a black and white colorway. Uh, and I grabbed eight and a half just to be sure. The previous releases, they were running a little bit bigger. So I always grabbed size eight and that fit me perfectly well. Now with this new release, go through the size eight and a half uh, is actually excellent fit for me. Now let's break it. The first thing they did right is the shape. Look at that toe box, there are no more banana boats or ice cream scoop uh, bottoms uh, and what i'm talking about as i'm going to show you right now this is the 2013 retro of the omnizone one and you will see how the toe box curves up compared to the omnizone two now 
and it is looking like a boat. And all the Omni lights before and all the Omni zones were released like that with this horrible looking curvy up outsole. For some reason, I have no clue why, but I guess their molds were done this way. And now finally we have a proper one with a completely flat bottom. That's exactly how it was. That's exactly how it needs to be. Your foot naturally doesn't curve up. When you step down, it's completely flat. So this is unnecessary. And I was so mad <laughs> before seeing it. Now with this Omni 1, they did a lot of things good. And I'm gonna show you a comparison with the Omni 2 and tell you why some of the features from this Omni 1 should have been here. Um, next thing they did right, they, well, somewhat right, is they actually added the original textured inner liner. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but hopefully it does. And you'll see that it's kind of textured, sort of lined uh, inner liner. Uh, the problem is the original one was horizontal to the shoe. So the lines were going like this all the way down and now they're vertical. Unnecessary change. I think they should have stuck to what the original was and the horizontal ones are actually helping you keep that shoe to your sock because it creates a better traction. Now being vertical actually does the opposite. Your foot goes in and out very easily. So if you're planning to play basketball on these for some reason, you're gonna have to tie them up pretty, uh, pretty hard. Seems like a nitpicky thing, but if we're doing it right with the texture, why just not do it the same way it was, right? Uh, next thing, leather. For the majority of the part, the shoe is done in a beautiful, genuine leather. I'm still not convinced that the toe box uh, leather is genuine and camera will not pick it up, but it's weird. It's definitely a lot thinner cut than the toe uh, box guard and side panels are and you know pushing it down it doesn't feel like a genuine leather and if that's synthetic that's sloppy cheap and not good at all even if we take this 2013 omni one you will see how the leather naturally creased on the toe box and that's exactly how it needs to be this leather is amazing and it's exactly the same cut as the toe guard and the panels and all around genuine leather uh, which is really, really nice. And uh, man, I'm, I'm really hoping that this is leather because just the texturing doesn't look like leather. It looks like synthetic, uh, but you know, who knows? We'll see over time. My money is that it's not genuine leather. Um, next thing to notice, obviously they did stitched in Reebok and basketball around the pump on the ton, which this is how the original one shoe was. Great to see. It was not just painted like a lot of later releases and and by later releases this is the omni light from 2013 and you'll see we have a massive reebok and basketball around the pump but they're painted so no the original one was stitched stay stitched this painted stuff should have not happened at all should have been stitched and uh yeah but uh, let me line up this one as well here so we can show some of the differences. Let's talk about the pumps. Okay, a lot of people are saying, well, do they actually pump? Let's put it this way. They pump, but they do not pump like the original ones. They don't even pump like the 2013 Omni Zone. There's some air coming in, there's some air coming out, but it will take you like a hundred pumps to start feeling it at all which again is very cheap and i feel like they should have done a better job with the pumps you're not giving us a genuine hexalite at least give us a functional pump the other thing they've they've done right is the stitching on the back and you'll see now finally we have hexalite that is stitched in and it's the correct size just like the original ones before we had the lights which was a tiny written hexalite it was printed in and painted and that is no good. So we have it stitched in, much better. Speaking of uh, Hexalite, Hexalite is still not original. It's this felt Hexalite lookalike, and the original ones right above it here had written on the outside of Hexalite, and you'll see all these retros, they don't even feature Hexalite, Reebok themselves don't even put Hexalite on the outsole because there isn't Hexalite. There's a Hexalite lookalike, it's not a hexalite. There's a little thing they did here on the tongue to kind of reminisce and make it look like the original. And this is adding this little tag 
with the sizing this is how the original size was done back in the day with all the Reeboks it was on the side of the pump with this retro look of the sizing and where it's made these are made in Vietnam the other side they put uh, the pump which was not on the original pair but that's fine I appreciate that but then at the same time why put sizing again right here on the taunt just keep it clean and uniform remove this and just leave the side one unnecessary i'm not sure why they did this and when i pull the insole out the original insole was not textured like this this is exactly the texture they have on the inner liner they put it on top of the insole uh, with reebok and the pump which the writing is the same as the original one just not the texture and the insole itself it's very similar to the original one it was this athletic uh, and anatomically correct insole which is fine i guess you know it's it's not a big deal they put the texturing it's not as accurate as the original one but it's fine i'm not mad about that at all now height wise i don't know if they had different rulers in back in 91 while i was in high school and i remember them having a different rulers than now and size and height and width should be the same right the original Omnizone 2 was at least half an inch taller shoe. So picture it up to here. Now we have a shoe that is slightly higher than the Omni Light, but still not as high as it's supposed to be. So basically they did the height of the Omni 1 Retro, even a little bit lower than the Omni 1 Retro. This was more close to the original height than this. Still not as high, but a little bit closer so you can see if i put them right next to each other the omni one is a bit higher so it missed opportunity i think they just decided to save money instead of releasing their original height of the shoe which would have looked a lot a lot better than this kind of slimmed down version of it then and another detail that kind of ticks me off uh, you will notice the omni one dip on the hill is more accurate to the original of the omni one and omni two then this retro you'll see how minuscule this one is here on the omni 2 it's basically not existing and on the original one was a lot deeper and wider just like this one well actually it was a little bit bigger but the on, omni one is more accurate than this omni 2 version now again missed opportunity on details and somebody should have told them but i don't know why they decided that the other big problem that most people are complaining about and i'm going to complain about as well is the actual graphic on the pump now we have the pump with the arch on top of it where the original one was not done like that it was done just like this with just an orange basketball with pump in the middle of it same was done with the omni one retro and with the omni lights you will see just orange pump with pump written on it the arch and d were not colored they're still on the pump but uh, they were kind of same color orange. I think that was a missed opportunity for them to make it more like the original one uh, And details like that matter to people like me and people actually that will go for the shoe because they love it And because they've seen it back in the day and because they're a fan of it and not because they just want to resell it and you know Make some money of it. That's another as aspect that I have to talk about getting these shoes was extremely stressful situation and i'm sure everybody that goes after hype nikes and all that stuff know what i'm talking about fighting bots resellers uh, side crushing and trying to get the shoes for retail just to have one pair and wear them becomes almost impossible on reebok.com when they released at midnight the site was frozen uh, sizes were frozen you had to refresh multiple times took 20 30 minutes for a lot of people for me it was like 15 minutes but still mashing that f5 trying to get your size in the card and then check out i i got them in the card once before i check out they disappeared so i went back in finally was able to check out make the process easier guys come on uh, put put some money and invest something on the website so no bots and no resellers that go with multiple accounts go and buy all the stock just let people that want to buy them buy them uh and that's another thing i mean 150 dollars for this kind of shoe i think it's way too much you know if i had a coupon that i can cut them in half and get them for like 75 80 dollars that would have been perfect price but for 150 i feel like i was cheated that's my honest opinion it's a lot of money for a shoe that's supposed to have a tech but it doesn't it's an old tech that it's not even done correctly uh no hexalite no functioning 
actual functioning pump. Uh, no full-on leather like it was supposed to be, no height. Uh, I mean, the, the best thing they'd done correctly was just the shape of the tow box and uh, outsole, that's about it. I mean, the rest of it is, they, have, they could have done a much better job. I think a lot of the Re Reebok purists like myself will feel a little bit uh, cheated on these and let down because uh, it was a long wait time, 30 years, and we got something that should have been done a lot better. Um, yeah, it's better than getting another Omni Light, which it's okay, you know, this shoe is okay. I wear it, obviously, but it's not something I was super happy about. Colorway is accurate, but the rest of it is not. And look at this banana, look at this banana boat. I mean, that's obvious differences. Look how much the tote box curves on these lights and the Omni Zone is so much more comfortable because this uh, outsole and midsole are completely flat and your foot sits naturally inside. You'll see them on feet as well. They're not uncomfortable. They're actually pretty comfortable. The fit is like I mentioned through the size and I would definitely rock them with no problem. I will not double up just because they're way too expensive. I think for what they are, that's a lot of money that I could save. And I stopped paying retail and over retail a long, long time ago. It's just not worth it. Uh, they're only shoes, guys. I understand that a lot of you go out and buy shoes to sell and a lot of you want something very much and you pay over retail. But my honest opinion and what I would do and what I'm doing for many, many years is never pay over retail. I think I've done it once or twice over the span of the last, I don't know, 20 some years. And I have over 400 pairs, so it's, it's not reasonable for me. Um, especially when the shoe is not done 100% correct to the original one, I feel like paying the money they ask for is like I've been very, very cheated. And this whole video will sound like it's negative, but it really isn't. I mean, I'm glad they brought the model back. I'm glad they brought the name back finally and got rid of the Omni Light uh, name. I'm glad that they did the shape correctly. And I can only hope the next time they can do the height correctly because that's easily achievable. They have the outsole mold, just bring the height up and uh, use better materials. You know, I'm not sure about this toe box and you know, some details like the dip here in the back, the tongue and the pump, you know, all these kind of things matter for, for us for people that are actually fans of the brand and they actually want to buy them to wear them. But if you ask me $150 now, I mean, I was, I'm actually pretty close to returning these just because of these details of the non-functioning pump, of the small things that are missed. Uh, I'm still debating. I have some time to decide. Maybe I will, maybe I'll not. I'll see about that. I'm definitely not reselling them. That's not who I am. I'm almost never selling any of my sneakers and those of you that bought to resell, good luck to you. Uh, when it comes to craftsmanship, I mean, there's almost no excessive glue. I mean, here and, here and there I see a little smudges, uh, a little like excessive paint. Uh, this painted white piece here has uh, some, some blemishes on the leather. I see a few scratches here and there, but it's nothing too striking. It's I've seen a lot worse from other brands. Uh, the, the only thing is just, I feel like they should have put thick genuine leather on the toe box here. Overall, they're comfortable. If you want to rock them, just rock them and don't even care because these are classic pumps are just amazing. And that's pretty much it, guys. The other original colorway that Dennis Rodman wore while he was in the Detroit Pistons team and the one that he was featured in a lot of the Reebok commercials, uh, the white and kind of blue, it's coming soon as well. I'm not sure when they're going to release, probably next month. Uh, but I'm personally not gonna go and pay another $150. I'm just gonna wait. And eventually, I know, maybe here and further down the road, I'm gonna stumble upon some pair that is slightly used or never used and somebody's trying to get rid of them. And I'm gonna get them on a lot cheaper because this is just uh, way too expensive for what they are offering. So that's about it, my friends. Uh, Reebok Omnizone 2, finally released after 30 years. Shout out to D Brown making these absolutely legendary and shout out to all the rich kids in my school that made me jealous and wanted me to chase these 
shoes and have this channel for you guys to see and uh, enjoy it hit the thumbs up if you like the video stay tuned to the channel subscribe if you're new there is a lot more coming very very soon hit that bell notification and until next time guys you have a wonderful day